Welcome to our financial aid presentation. Remember that you can always sign up for Remind by texting at SOHI2020 to the number 81010 or your class if it's 21, 22, or 23 to get text reminders from the counselors. We have quite a few timelines um, established, and these are available on Counselor's Corner and also in our post-secondary advising guide. But just so you know, there is a recommended timeline for each grade level. You can find customized timelines on College Board. Also, just so you know, when we're talking about post-secondary options, we're including apprenticeship programs, flight schools, vocational schools, community colleges, and four-year colleges. All of those are viable training opportunities for after high school. Considerations when you're looking at applying to schools, what are the admissions requirements, do you need them, do they have the programs you want, are they offered, size and location, what are the costs, what's the financial aid packages they offer, housing, and the employment rate. For types of costs, we wanted to focus on, if you look on this slide, it shows you some specific averages for in-state um, and out-of-state costs, and we also wanted to touch base on direct costs, which would be your tuition, which is the cost of classes, fees and books versus indirect costs, which would be room and board, um, and other transportation, cell phone, etc. This is just a graph to show you kind of an average um, estimated undergraduate budgets. I got this on College Board, and you take a look at that. So cost of attendance, this is your institution or the school expense plus your living expense, and that's what's used to determine your financial need. There are a number of websites out there that, where you can compare the cost for different schools. CollegeNavigator.gov is a great one. Also, AKCIS.org and College Board are great uh, websites to compare the cost of colleges. So different types of financial aid are grants, which are free money via state and federal programs. You first want to fill out the FAFSA to see what you're eligible to receive. Scholarships are free money. You don't have to pay them back, but you must apply to get them. Loans are borrowed money, you must pay them back, and also don't forget work study at your college or institution to see if you can get decreased tuition or housing costs. So we are in the classrooms this week working on the scholarship portfolio template with students. Check your Gmail for that. Remember that each scholarship has its own application. Completing the portfolio doesn't mean that you've applied for anything. You can check your Gmail for applications from the counseling office, and then you can also search on quite a bit of the scholarship websites and you can look on one stop on kpbsd.org but the trick is to apply and apply and apply for a lot of different scholarships these are some different websites that you can use to search for scholarships and these are again are on counselors corner fastweb is a great website you fill out your profile and it will match scholarships to you capex is another great resource and scholarships.com but again, you can look on One Stop. So One Stop is great if you click on the one icon on KPBSD and then you click on the left, it says Scholarship Database. This pulls up, um, it's weekly, it's updated weekly, and the ones due at the top are the ones um, closest that are due the soonest. Um, and these are all the local scholarships that are available around the district. This is a really great resource. So we use um, the Alaska Career Information System with our students and have a grade-specific activity for each grade starting in seventh grade. Students can access access through their power school. One activity that we do junior year is a school search or a school sort, and, school, and students have the opportunity to compare different schools in terms of all the different um, expectations that they have of that institution. Senior year, we're doing a financial aid sort, so students have the opportunity to put in specifics about themselves, come up with a list of scholarships that they might eventually apply for later on this year. They save it into their portfolio. So another thing is to make sure you're eligible for the Alaska Performance Scholarship. You can check that in PowerSchool. It says APS checklist for students. Double check to make sure you've met the curriculum. There are GPA requirements and also SAT, ACT, or work key scores that are specific to receive the level of aid at each level. Also, you'll need to fill out the FAFSA to be eligible um, for the APS. So WUI is a great program, scholarship program. It's Western Undergraduate Exchange, and students who are interested in attending um, institutions, there's over 160 in the states that are listed at the bottom. So when you look at WUI, um, basically what you're doing is you're getting resident tuition and a half, 
So you're getting that in-state tuition. Um, the application process varies. I can't emphasize enough to contact the institution you're applying to and ask them if there's a separate application for Louis or if just applying to that college is sufficient. Also know that there's usually an early deadline in January or February, and each school will determine the academic requirements for via GPA and your test scores. And also it's limited funding, so I recommend to file your FAFSA and apply early. So for FAFSA, this is the free application for federal student aid, and it opens today, which is October 1st. It's online at fafsa.gov. Um, it's based on your prior year tax information, so you would need to bring your 2018 tax information to fill this out. It's also updated every year that you have a student going to college, and this is something that must be filled out for Alaska Performance Scholarship, loans, and a lot of scholarships that you're applying for from your institution. If you have any troubles at all, you can watch some instruction videos on the Federal Student Aid YouTube channel. So first, after you click Submit, your FAFSA goes to the federal government and you will receive back a SAR, a student aid report, which tells you what you qualify for based on your estimated family contribution. And that's not an offer of aid. Next, your FAFSA goes to the state and then you can find out what state grants, loans, and of course Alaska Performance Scholarship level you qualify for. Then after that, the FAFSA will go to the institution, all of the institutions that you list, up to 10 colleges. And sometimes they require verification, and eventually you will get an award letter from your institution that has scholarships, loans, and need-based aid based on uh, demonstrated financial need. It's negotiable, and remember, you don't have to accept any of it. Here's what it looks like when you go to the site. I can't emphasize enough that it is the free application for federal student aid. You should never ever be asked to pay a fee of any kind. If you're on a site that's asking you to pay an application fee, then you are not on the .gov site. So this is what it looks like. So some um, grants to keep in mind is when you, after you're filling out the FAFSA, you would be put in the running to see if you're eligible for any of these. A major one is the Pell Grant. It's based on student need and you can look at the specifics on the slide or look this up. There's also the TEACH grant if you have a student that's interested in, um, in a career in teaching, and there's also the Federal Student Educational Opportunity Grant, and that would be awarded by the financial office at each college. There's also a bunch of in-state grants also. This is the Alaska Advantage Education Grant, and you can see the website listed to find more information. In-state, it's needs-based, and it lists the priority fields that this focuses on. Just to let you know the difference between subsidized loans and unsubsidized loans, both are borrowed money, which you have to pay back, but the subsidized loans, um, the U.S. Department of Education is going to pay the interest for you, so you're not paying on that loan until after you've left school for six months. So six months after you've graduated, you'll start paying on that loan, but while you're in school, um, you will not have to pay on that. The unsubsidized loans, also money you have to pay back, but you have to start paying immediately, you have to start paying on the interest for that loan and the school determines the amount that can be borrowed for both of those. Other types of loans that you can get are the Federal Direct Plus Loan, the Alaska State Loan, and other types of loans. We also have some forgiveness programs that you can look into, such as WAMI, and there's exchange programs that you can look at, and you might also even consider checking with your bank, because a lot of banks do have college loans available. So some other tips to maybe look into and you could ask um, your accountant if you if you have one about these but some people have talked about the American Opportunity Tax Credit there's also the Lifetime Learning Tax Credit or getting deductions for certain expenses um, you might want to check IRS um, PUB 970 um, and look into that for more tips so the process once you filled out the FAFSA and you've received um, you, you've got your um, EFC once the award is actually offered to you, you and your family can sit down. You can either accept part of it, all of it, or none of it. You can also negotiate. You can go with through called some loan counseling, maybe working with a financial aid office at the college you're applying to. Once you decide on the amount, you're going to have to sign what's called the Master Promissory Note, and then you're off to college. So some financial aid myths we want to bust quickly is that you don't have to have a 4.0 to get a scholarship. There's a lot of them that are based on hardship or financial need, and you don't have to have that perfect GPA to get a scholarship. 
Also, we get lots of questions about people saying, my family saved up money or my parents have saved enough money. I don't, I'm not going to qualify. You don't know. Again, there's scholarships out there for everybody. So please, please don't let that keep you from applying to scholarships. Um, so again, we can't emphasize enough that there's scholarships out there for everyone. You just have to apply. Some upcoming events that we have are our College Goal FAFSA Completion Workshops. If you would like to come in and bring your 2018 tax information, you can come in and fill that out. We will have assistance available from the Financial Aid Department at Kenai Peninsula College. We have two workshops. One is going to be on October 9th, and one is going to be on October 18th at 5.30 in the library. You can come to that workshop with none of your FAFSA filled out, or you can come to that with some of your FAFSA filled out. Either way, we're there to help you. There's no formal presentation. It's just jump on a computer, and the experts from KPC are there to help you. Also, we have the College and Career Fair coming up on October 15th from 10 to 1. It's open to the public 10 to 1. However, SOHI is going to take a bus over. We'll be leaving here at about 9. For our spot, there'll be over 50 colleges recruiters, trade schools, and lots of other representatives there to talk to you. So some helpful financial aid resources. Federal Student Aid, that, that website is excellent. It gives you information on the FAFSA, the different types of loans and grants that are available. Also the Alaska Commission on Post-Secondary Education. I really recommend you looking at that. Also if you want help, a step-by-step -step process of filling out your FAFSA, you can YouTube the Federal Student Aid and they have great videos. Um, or attend one of our FAFSA workshops. If you'd like to get more updates about Counseling Department events, sign up for Remind, which is a texting service. You can download the app, or you can text at SOHI2020 or your class to the number 81010, and you will be signed up to receive notifications. If you have any questions about this uh, presentation, this has been a really quick recap of a much longer presentation. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us, and if we don't know the answer, we will direct you to someone who can help you. And again, we thank you for being here. Have a great day.